you know it's going to be a good video when my shot list looks like this. <laughs> In this Tying Tips video, we're covering rabbit strips. So it turns out I missed a tying tips video last month and I heard about it. My apologies, I'll do better. I don't promise, I really don't, but I'll try. Some short announcements. I have the most dull knife ever. The streamer tactics videos are coming. Turns out they're a ton of work. And I'm trying my best. Yeah. Hey Brian, thanks for the dope tying videos. You really inspired a couple of new beef fly guys from Wisconsin with all the possibilities of local water. Looking forward to the new series on your YouTube channel. Thanks. Uh, I included a couple stickers in case you have a few plague spaces on a cooler or water bottle or keep crushing your videos. Sincerely, Greg and the rest of the Midwest Nomads crew. Midwest Nomads crew, thanks for the stickers. I will absolutely keep crushing videos. And this package is from Aiden Jimdar. Jimdar? It might be a soft J. I believe it's jogging or yawning. It might be a soft J. I'm not sure. <laughs> I cracked myself up. What is that? There. Aiden says, I uh, love your videos, learned, learned so much from you. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have gotten into tying big flies. Duh, Aiden, buddy, thank you. Um, speaking of big flies, check out this huge bucktail flash thing I used to catch a 70 pound halibut in Alaska. What? It's on like a 17 odd hook. My man. Well done. Ah. So just like all fly tying materials, rabbit strips come in tons of different shapes, sizes, colors, and now we've got some extra bling on stuff. I'll get to that one. But there's a color and a size to tie just about anything that you're gonna need to tie with rabbit strips. I'm a huge fan of rabbit strips on streamers in like the small to medium size range. I don't usually use them on, on bigger flies because it's they're going to hold a lot of water and they get heavy. But those small to medium flies, yeah, oh yeah. So like I was saying, rabbit strips come in tons of colors. Some are barred, some are duo tone, like Spirit River, they've got like a, a two toned strip. So it's literally toned two different colors on the hair. Toward the hide it's one color, at the end it's another. Super cool stuff. They've got those in chartreuse and black, white and red, orange and black, olive and black. I'm sure there's more colors, but yeah, those are cool. But for the flies I tie the most, I'm gonna end up landing on Hairline's Magnum strips. The Magnum strips are just a little bit bigger. They help with a profile a little bit better and especially the, for the flies that I'm gonna be tying most. But um, that's just my favorite size, is the hairline magnum strips. To give you an idea of the difference in the magnum and the regular, this is a regular, that's a magnum. Regular, magnum. Obviously a size difference, yeah. Hairline carries these in straight regular colors like chartreuse and yellow, they, but they also carry them in a tiger barred color. So you can see that barring, stuff like that, just to give it some extra flair. Just an FYI, they also carry the tiger barred strips in regular sizes too, even though that's a magnum. Just trust me, that's a magnum too. Magnum, magnum. Uh, you'll just have to trust me. They do. <laughs> but if you ask me one of the coolest things to come out in the fly tying world in the last, I don't know, couple years are these hairline bling rabbit strips so instead of just having like a blank hide they got some bling on them these also these also come in the magnum and the regular size uh, and they also have different colors too so black with like a super bright fluorescent red accent um, 
These things are fun. These things are a lot of fun. If you have ever tied with rabbit strips, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about with this little tip right here. Inevitably, when you pull a rabbit strip out from the package, it's gonna be wonky. Just wonky. So before you go cutting this thing and before you do anything else, what I will do every single time, grab it by the top, grab it by the bottom, and stretch it. The wonkiness goes away. It's as easy as that. Then you can cut it, you're good to go. So first things first, when you get ready to cut this to the size you want it to be, you don't want to just make a, a hard cut. You want to part this hair. And ideally, the only thing you're going to cut is the hide. No hair. So I've got it parted right here. Slide my scissors under it. Cut. So I didn't cut, well, cut a little bit of hair, but just a tiny, tiny little bit of hair. If you make a hard cut like this, look at all the hair you cut off. It's all just wasted hair. So part it first, then cut it, then you're good to go. And there's a lot less fuzz flying around in the air. Okay, so you've kind of built your fly. You're at the point where you're ready to, to tie down the rabbit strip on top of the hook or on the underside of the hook. The first thing I'm gonna do is scoop my thread a little ways back from the eye of the hook. I need a little bit of room to tie off and still be able to cut off the hide without covering the eye of the hook. If you do cover the eye of the hook, stick around for the next step in the video because that's where it gets fun and there's fire involved. Okay, so I've scooted my thread back about a hook eye length, width, yeah, I'm gonna lay my Rabbit strip back over it, and I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna hold it with this hand and kind of preen all these fibers back. And a lot of you have seen me spin my thread a lot, like this. Okay, so what that does is give me more control over my thread, and it makes my thread cord up, so I know exactly where it's gonna land. It's a little bit stronger. There's there's all sorts of good things that happen when you spin your thread. So at this point. I have scooted my thread back, I've spun my thread, I've preened these fibers back, and I know exactly where I want this thread to land. So I'm gonna give it a loose wrap, and another loose wrap, and just let it be. At this point, I'm gonna let go with this hand because it's trapped. The thread's doing everything I needed it to do. But I'm gonna grab these little fibers right here, and this takes a little bit of getting used to because you have to give and take. With my bobbin hand I'm going to release just a little bit of pressure as I pull up on these fibers right here. And What you're going to see is this curl up because I'm pulling fibers underneath the thread. So what ends up happening is I have a little bit more fibers toward the head than I do anywhere else. Okay, So I'm going to release just a little bit of thread tension here and pull up and that's going to create just that extra little bit of bulk back behind the thread and you see this curl so all I have to do I've already got two thread wraps on it all I have to do is tighten those thread wraps now and keep a tight thread and wrap in front of the hide and I'm good to go for this next step I feel like there should be a warning saying Go try this at home, that type of thing. If you have tied with rabbit strips very long at all, you have crowded the eye of the hook so badly that you will not be able to put tip it through the eye of the hook. I guarantee it. It's happened. Best way to deal with this, number one, is to make sure that you scoot the thread back before you tie it off, just like we talked about in the last step. Give it an eye width. Always give yourself that room. But if you do, get to this point, there's an issue. Best way to deal with it, I've got a loon bodkin. I'm gonna run it straight up through all that stuff. I have a lighter. I'm gonna heat up my bodkin until it's very, very hot. So all I have to do now is pull this bodkin through 
it's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but you can get through that eye of the hook now. But if you're already at this point, you don't want to start over on the fly just because you crowded the eye of the hook. Just burn a hole into it. <laughs> One of the inherent issues with rabbit strips is that they tend to foul on the hook whenever you're fishing them. So, so basically this tail will wrap around the hook, something like that. There are several ways to deal with this. You can do a mono loop, you can do uh, just all sorts of different things. Pat Cohen has a really cool way to deal with this uh, that I'll link in the description below. Um, but the way I deal with it, and, the, I, and I think it's honestly the easiest way to deal with it, is with Loon UV Resin. You guys see this stuff on my channel all the time. The reason it fouls is immediately, as soon as you tie it in, it, create, it creates a hinge, which is what we need for swim, right? Like a tail. But with too much of a hinge, we get that, we get that fouling, like that. So if we turn this over, and we put a little bit of Loon UV resin right on the hide, right up against the hook, and then about a half inch out away from the hook. Then we hit it with the torch. What that will do is help create just a little bit of rigidity so it doesn't want to foul so much. You'll still get all the swim from the tail and, and all the material on top of the hook and all the fur, but you're not going to get so much of that fouling that you might see if you didn't do that. The easiest foul guard ever is UV resin on the hide. Guaranteed. So I'm going to get a little nostalgic here. When I first started tying big streamers, um, my go-to material was rabbit strips. And one of the very first big streamers I ever tied was a, a double, double bunny. Everybody remembers those double bunnies from forever ago. They're phenomenal fly. They're a, a single hook, two rabbit strips, one on top, one on bottom. Everybody remembers these. Well, one of my good buddies, Steve Dally, gave me this big, huge, black, black on black double bunny. But it had two hooks on it, and it was about, I don't know, seven inches long, six, seven inches long. So my very first venture into large streamer tying with multiple hooks was a double, double bunny. We, we didn't know what to call it back then or anything like that and I actually have it the very first one right here it, you may want to avert your eyes because it's not pretty that's it <laughs> the front hook is like a number I don't know four B10S maybe I don't even know I don't even know if the B10S was out back then was the B10S out in 2005? Oh, I, we don't know. B10S and then like a, a four-aught rear hook <laughs> that's red. Uh, it may even be like a circle hook type of thing. I don't know. But but yeah, this was my, this was one of my very, very first forays into the whole uh, large streamer tying world. Um, it's horrible. Uh, it's horrible, but you know what? This is what got me started. And my mind back then, and still to this day, is that rabbit strips have a very strong place in my fly tying world, and they always will. <laughs>